I've said before I really like my first generation Honda Pilot, but it has a design flaw, and that flaw can kill your battery. In the second and third rows of the Pilot are these handle lights, and obviously the handle is there to help you get out of the car, but uh, built into that handle uh, is a light and also a switch for that light. And these lights can have sort of four modes. They can be fully off all the time. Uh, they can be in door mode where it, when the doors open, they turn on. They can be fully on all, all the time. Or they can be individually switched by that switch in the handle. And the problem with this individually switched mode is it works regardless of whether or not the car is on or the key is in the ignition. So the normal scenario for us is that uh, someone uses the handle to get out of the car and then accidentally presses the switch, the button for the light. And you don't notice this because the lights are on anyway because of the door switch, uh, the door uh, mode. And uh, you leave the car and then a minute later all the other lights turn off except for that one uh, that had the switch turned on and that one stays on forever until the battery dies. The one crude way to deal with this is to just pop the lens off like this and then put a little piece of plastic tubing over the switch so that you can't depress the switch and then you lose that ability to uh, turn on the lights individually. So it might sound like kind of a dramatic thing to do, but it's certainly better than losing your battery when you don't expect it. The other way to fix this, of course, is to modify the circuit so that it, it can't stay on all the time. This is the schematic for the interior lights, and this is one of those uh, handle lights, handle switches, and then you can see how it goes straight up to the battery. Now, I don't know how easy it would be to try and change that connection so that it's not hooked up to the battery directly, but up to the accessory power. So what is accessible? Well, the switch is accessible. So here's that switch in the schematic, and you can see that it has the off and the on and the door positions, but each of these really just determine whether or not the circuit grounds. So my thinking was to break this path here shown in green, such that it is only connected when, say, the headlights are on. So the method for doing that is to break this line on the X here, that's pin six on the switch, and then control that switch with um, the line right next to it, pin two, which is power, and that power is only on when the headlights are on. So schematically, this is what it might look like. So I break that line, the line that goes to pin six on the switch, and I insert a transistor. It's called a MOSFET and that MOSFET switch is controlled by pin 2 right next door. So here's that MOSFET all soldered up, complete with that 10K resistor. And that 10K resistor goes from the gate to the source, and that just drains off any charge so that the switch, the MOSFET, can turn off quickly. So here's the insert into the dash that uh, contains the cruise control and that interior light switch. And then with a little prying, you can get that out and then the wiring harnesses just come off with these little thumb tabs. And then once that was out, then I pushed the light switch harness down and underneath so that I could bring it out here. It just gave me a little bit more room to access the wires. The green and white wire here is that uh, pin six that I was talking about earlier, and the red and black are this pin two. So the plan is to just take like an X-Acto knife and scrape some of the insulation off of the uh, red and black wire there because uh, I just need to tap into that wire. But I'll actually cut the other wire, the green and white wire, because uh, that's the one that's going to, uh, I'm, where I'm going to break the path and insert that MOSFET. So sorry about the video here. Uh, it was just an awkward angle. Uh, in the end, I just ended up clipping that wire and inserting the wires and soldering them. So here's what it looks like with that MOSFET soldered in. So now it's just a matter of moving that wiring harness back up top and then reattaching the switches. Okay, so the, now for the test. With the key, no key in the car, but also the lights are off, I can now reach back and try the lights. The lights do not work. But now if I turn the lights on, and then try the switch again, the lights do work. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Okay, so one more thought about how to deal with this uh, draining the car battery thing. LED bulbs use about one-tenth the energy that a regular incandescent bulb does. 
so it gives you a lot more time to catch the bulb being on. Here I removed the old incandescent bulb, but when I went to install the LED bulb, I found that it didn't fit. It was actually pretty loose. So the fix was actually pretty simple. And just to squeeze these contacts together to pinch the bulb a little bit tighter. Also, since the LED bulb has a, a wider surface area for producing light, I wanted to bend back one of the fins on this little metal cover plate so that more of that LED light came out. So I'm pleased with the project. Uh, I like actually the LED lights and the way they look. And also if um, one of those switches happens to get turned on inadvertently, at least it's not going to kill the battery. So I hope uh, this helps somebody out there. Take care. Bye.